am getting in the mood for fall. So for today's episode, I have compiled 10 amazing, hopefully mind-blowing home hacks for fall. Let's get, woo! <laughs> that was close. We've got a lightning storm, thunder lightning storm going on. So this episode is gonna be very exciting. <laughs> For our first fall hack, I wanted to try out a new technique that I had seen somewhere. I don't even remember where I saw the initial video, but when I saw it, I was like, I have never seen anything like that, and that is fun. For that, we are going to go into the kitchen where it's a little safer to do it because we are gonna be playing with fire. Boys, don't listen. <laughs> All right, so this next hack is so cool and it's really gonna blow your mind if you haven't seen this yet. It's just that awesome. So I have brought it in my kitchen. Outside would work good. I would not recommend doing this on your kitchen table or your craft table if it's wood because we are playing with fire. So here we go. This is what we're gonna do. We are gonna take a napkin and I kind of have debated back and forth between the cheetah print and the gingham. And I think I'm gonna go with the gingham because I think I can do another DIY in a couple weeks that will match this up with. So let me show you what we're gonna do. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this because it's unnecessary and it will get in the way actually. And then we're gonna need two napkins. For those of you who are curious, I got these napkins at Hobby Lobby. Then what we're gonna want to do is try to get just the top layer of this napkin. So you're gonna separate it like so. There is another layer and it's really important that you only get the top layer because otherwise it won't work right. Okay, so there we go. And tissue paper I bet would work as well. And then, cause we're gonna need two here. So you can see that w the word is kind of long. So we'll put a seam right here at the K. The secret to this is we are going to take some Mod Podge, squeeze some Mod Podge on here. You want to be pretty generous with the Mod Podge. We can do a little cleanup later. Just kind of brush it out. And then you are going to tap, tap, tap the napkin into place. Work quickly here. Now we're gonna try to line this up. And while it's still wet, you want to do a rough cut around the edges of your words. You also want to poke some holes in the middle of, like in the middle of the A, you wanna poke a hole in there. So, and you're gonna see why in just a second. Now we're gonna play with fire. Kids, do not try this at home. Only adults under supervision. We're gonna move anything that's paper. We're gonna focus doing this over my granite countertops. And what we're gonna do is light it on fire. Oh, look at that. And what it does is it gives us a perfect edge. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? It just is burning all the way around. And if it stops, move your hand. You don't wanna get burned. And if it stops in an area, we'll go back and hit that area. But it gives us, see it just went out. So now we're gonna do it on here. And you can see, look how it is getting right up to the edge. Isn't this the coolest thing you've ever seen? And then you want to do this while the Mod Podge is wet because it will ex extinguish it. It's so awesome, right? <laughs> how fun is that? And then to clean up the edges, we'll continue to do this, but just to show you, to clean up the edges, you just take a paintbrush and we can just brush it off and clean up the edges. And isn't that the coolest technique ever? This was my first attempt at this, and so I did get a couple of burn marks, but you know what? I think it adds to the rustic nature of this, so it's not a big deal. And now I'm just gonna take some crystal clear coat and we are going to spray a sealer. There you go. 
Easy peasy, here it is. And now isn't it so cute? Now you could do any word you want. You could do this for any season or not. So you might be seeing me use this technique in the future. I think that it is so fun and it definitely lends itself for a rustic fall appearance. And I just think this is adorable. Isn't that a cool hack? I had never seen that before and maybe you hadn't either. So I wanted to share it with you because I just thought it was awesome. wanted to tap a pumpkin. Now it's a little early in my area to find a real pumpkin. So I got this foam one that we are going to tap and I have a way that we're going to make it food safe. And the cool thing about doing the foam pumpkin is it will be something that we could use in the future. So it's not like a one and done, but I really think doing a live fresh pumpkin would be super fun. Let's do this one and I'll give you some tips about doing a fresh pumpkin along the way. First thing we are going to take a bowl and trace it on top. And then I have a hot knife already heated up here and we're gonna use that to cut through and hopefully it will make it super easy. Now, how do we make this food safe? I did this similar idea on a regular pumpkin for my sister's wedding several years ago. It was a fall wedding, it was really cool. We did some soup in a pumpkin. We are going to line it with a crock pot liner because these are food safe. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna just push this down and you could use like a really big five gallon Ziploc bag and we, we're gonna need to push this down as much as possible, but we don't want it to like cave in. So we're gonna take some little short pins. They look like this, and we're gonna just go around the rim and push it into place. And so that will kind of hold it into place for us. So we're gonna just fold this and pin it all the way around and try to push as much of the bag in as possible. We're kind of just pleating it because it's obviously going to bunch up. So we've got the top cut, we've got it lined, and now it's food safe. You don't necessarily have to do that with the liner for a fresh pumpkin, but you may not like the flavor of a, a fresh pumpkin, so you may want to do it anyways. And then like every time you reuse this one, you can just change out the bag and it, it should be too much trouble. So you have a completely food safe place to put your beverage. And so now we've got to decide where we want to tap it. We're gonna put it kind of towards the bottom. This is a kit that I got off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below. I imagine that you could use any kind of drink dispenser, but this one was made for watermelon, so I thought it would work on a pumpkin. So we're gonna just mark where we're gonna put that. And then it comes with a kind of, it looks very much like an apple core that I have in my possession. So I bet that's what it actually is. And we're gonna just use this as a saw and bore the hole for it. And it should be exactly the right size. And then we're gonna take our tap. We're gonna shove this through the hole. Make sure there's a hole just big enough for the, us to put it through. Actually, the tighter you can get it around it so it snugs on there, the, the, the liner bag, the better. That way it's not leaking out into the foam pump pin. If it does, you can probably rinse it out after the fact, but you wanna keep as much of the beverage in the plastic bag as possible. So we're gonna try to get that nice and snug on there. And then we're gonna just take the back on the inside of the pumpkin and thread that on. And that's it. And so I really think this is exciting and a fun idea here. And I'm gonna show you on our next hack just how it works, but isn't it cute? It looks super cute here.
for our next hack, we are going to be doing an easy butter beer. I just thought it would be fun to throw in a little fun fall drink. Now, whether you're a Harry Potter fan or not, Butterbeer is very yummy. Even though you can drink it any time of year, the butterscotch flavoring and the cream soda to me kind of has a fall flair. have an amazing home hack for fall or any other time of the year, let me know in the comment section below. A lot of times I get my hacks right from you, so I love hearing about them. I read all of them, so share it below. Okay, so for my next hack, we are gonna be doing a fall simmer pot. Oh man, I wish you could smell my house right now because it smells amazing. For this hack, what you're gonna need is an apple, an orange, a couple of cinnamon sticks, and vanilla. You may have all of these in your kitchen right now. You are going to make a simmer pot. This is great for parties or just to have the fall scent in your home, but this will do the trick. So what I did is I took a couple of apples that were kind of going by the way they were a little bit too soft to enjoyably eat but not quite like horrible <laughs> and so I just stuck them on my apple pillar core slicer and just did a pretty spiral with them and that was for looks but also to kind of open up the apple you don't need to do it that way you can just chop up an apple and throw it in a pot I just thought it would be fun and then I sliced up an orange and so it was two apples one large orange and then I put that in a pot and then I added two cinnamon sticks and a cap full of vanilla so it was probably I don't know like a generous teaspoon of vanilla and then I added uh, for I don't even know I didn't measure the water I just added some water and it, this all went in my beautiful pumpkin pot that I love that I mentioned in my Amazon finds video I'm gonna find every excuse to use it <laughs> this fall season you don't need the fancy pumpkin pot you can put this in any pot and it will still smell just as nice and then you just bring it to a boil and then turn down the heat to a low simmer and you can keep it going all day by adding a additional water um, make sure you don't leave it unwatched you know you don't want to burn it so just make sure that there's always a little bit of water and keep it nice and slow and your I promise you your house will smell absolutely amazing with this and so I was just wondering if you have any hacks that use apples that are maybe going by the way not quite edible for regular apple eating but uh, might be clever like that let me know in the comments below because I definitely want to hear that this next hack would be great for a party or just if you're feeling festive <laughs> all you need is some 
small cookie cutters. I picked up this set that I'm gonna be using at Hobby Lobby. You can get them anywhere, really. So I found this little mini pumpkin. I was able to cut six little pumpkins out of one slice of cheese. If you're very careful, you can do that as well. And then just do a little cheese and cracker plate. This could be just for you to feel festive or it could be for a fun party idea. And you can do all kinds of different fall leaves, you know, maple leaves, anything. And no need to get rid of the cast offs because they make a really great treat for your dog to get them to do little tricks for you. And according to the AKC, it is okay to give your dogs a little cheese or you could just save it and use it for yourself as well. But isn't that just a fun, easy fall hack. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. For my next hack, it's an easy fall napkin ring idea, and I just quickly put together an easy table setting to go along with it. So for this hack, I took another orange and I made it into slices and I ended up dehydrating these oranges on in my dehydrator. But if you don't have a dehydrator, you can dry out oranges in the oven. It's a little faster. It makes them a little bit darker in color, but you can get a very good result with that as well. But I went ahead and dehydrated mine on a dehydrator and what's really nice about that is it keeps them really nice and flat and it really keeps that orange color that's just kind of a fun thing then you're going to take some paper towel holders it could be the inside of a wrapping paper tube or a toilet paper roll all you need to do is cut it about two inches and then wrap it in whatever you have you could wrap it in burlap you could wrap it in rope i had this kind of fun cheetah print roll that i picked up at hobby lobby and it, I, I already had it on hand so i just grabbed it and i thought that might be kind of a, a fun little sassy element <laughs> on mine so I just cut it out about two inch width of it and then used a hot glue gun to start it and then I rolled it on and finished it out with hot glue when it was cool I folded it back and cut off the excess and then I took a little length of rope I didn't measure it at all like a twine a heavier twine um, I thought mine was a little bit thick I'd probably go with a, the baker's twine it, it would be a little bit better I think ultimately I mean it really did turn out cute and it's not a big deal but um, I think it would if I were to guess about eight inches and then you can kind of cut off the excess and then you're gonna poke two holes in your orange and you're gonna thread that rope through the orange to kind of hold it in place. Okay, so with the orange slice on, we are going to take some eucalyptus sprigs. I found this in the wedding section of Hobby Lobby and I just clipped off a couple of those, but you could use actually dried eucalyptus or whatever greenery you would like to use. And then I bought a whole bulk thing of cinnamon sticks because I've been using a ton of them this time of year and it's a better deal to buy them in bulk. And then I took one cinnamon stick and put that on top of the eucalyptus and tied a little bow. And then of course, any of the twine that is excess, then we can just cut that off. And that is a very quick, not so quick if you're trying the oranges. <laughs> that part is a little time consuming, not like active time, if that makes sense. But isn't that so chic? Now I put this on a, a white plate with a white linen napkin. And then I found these little wood thankful pieces. They're meant for table decor at Hobby Lobby. They're 50% off and super, super inexpensive. I think the whole bag was $4. And I think this makes an adorable table setting. You could use this at any of your fall gatherings, but it would especially look super cute for Thanksgiving, which is still a while away. So you've got some time to put this together, but isn't that so cute? And you can customize it how you like. For example, the napkin ring, if the cheetah print doesn't work for you, you could do a more rustic vibe. They do sell leather at the Dollar Tree, like the faux leather. And that would also, I think, look really cute with this. But what do you think of this table setting and this napkin ring idea? I hope you liked it. This next fall hack is a super easy way to upgrade an existing wreath that you already have, like an everyday wreath. If you have a regular boxwood wreath and you don't want to go out and buy a brand new wreath, but you kind of want to bring in that fall flare, this next hack is for you. 
super, super easy. So I bought a pack of a whole bunch of little tiny miniature pumpkins. And to help you with this next part, I have a free printable, which I will link in the description box below. We've had a couple of issues with the free printables, but overall we've made it super easy for you to access them. All you have to do is print this out, and then I just cut it out into two little pieces, the give and the thanks, and you're gonna pick out two miniature pumpkins, one slightly larger than the other, um, but not much, not much. And then you're going to take this printout and tape it to the middle of that tiny pumpkin. And then you're gonna take some graphite paper. Some people call it carbon paper. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing, <laughs> really. And you slide that underneath this printout and then you trace it onto your pumpkin. And then you take a fine tipped Sharpie and go over that transferred lettering. And you might want to do it a couple of times to really richen it up. And it says, give thanks. Then you're gonna pop out the stem of the bottom pumpkin, which will be the slightly larger pumpkin and get rid of it. And then you're gonna take a wood skewer and shove that into the bottom pumpkin and up through the top. And then we're gonna attach the tinier pumpkin, the one that says give on top of that. And then any excess of the skewer, then just clip that off. And then all you need to do is very gently shove that into your boxwood wreath and all of a sudden you have an instant and very cute fall themed wreath and you didn't have to buy a new one. You have about 50 cents worth of the pumpkins on the wreath and it is super easy, right? So I hope that fall wreath hack worked well for you. If you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below because I've got some amazing and very exciting things that are coming up in this fourth quarter and I don't want you to miss out. Well, you can't have fall without a little candy corn and I don't know what it is about this candy, but <laughs> I kind of like it. I don't know, it's like straight sugar, but it's kind of got a butterscotch flavor to it. It's really good and so if you like candy corn, you're gonna like this next hack. So I've seen this around, you've probably seen this around too, but I just wanted to do a little refresher because sometimes you don't need to go super crazy to really get a cute fall centerpiece or accent. This literally takes no formal training, but gets a really cute look in the end. This is using candy corn in two different ways. Now, the first way I did is I just took a glass bowl, put a candle in the center of it, and then poured in a whole bunch of candy corn in the base. And you could just leave it like that. You could do several of them. You could do them in different sizes. You could, like I did here, place it up on a white pedestal base or any kind of pedestal base to kind of give it a little bit of height and then do several smaller ones. But this is just to give you an idea. So you could do one with a candle in the center and it looks super, super cute. But like I said, this is two different ways. And so the second option is taking another base. This vase I had on hand. I've had it for a while and I just thought it would be really cute. I like that it has a little pedestal base on it already on this glass vase. And then you can take any kind of simple glass or canning jar like I did here and you put it in the center of the other vase and then you fill in the gap between the glass and the vase and fill it full of candy corn. And then I had these fall leaves that I ordered off of Amazon. And for those of you who watched my Amazon episode and saw that some of my fall leaves got sold out really fast, and <laughs> I apologize for that. And they substituted with a different one. I actually am gonna give you a few options for fall leaves that I found and have ordered off of Amazon that look really, really good. And then all we have to do is put your fall leaves in the center of the vase. Now you could do a whole floral arrangement if you wanted to, but keeping simple fall leaves looks so good with this 
set up with the candy corn. It screams fall. And you could use live fall leaves if you have access to them, or if not, if you don't have access to them like me, you can order them off of Amazon. So there's a lot of options, but I really think this is a super, super cute look. I love it. And it's super easy. You didn't need anything. And if you're feeling like you need a little snack, you can go snatch a couple of the candy corn and pop them. Hang on. <laughs> so I hope you like that. So this next hack I have done on my channel before, but it was a few years ago. So I wanted to do a little refresher and I also wanted to throw in a little other dynamic. So that is to upgrade a store-bought cupcake. I've done a similar idea on my last Christmas hack episode one. I like to zhuzh up store-bought cupcakes because sometimes you're in a hurry, but you want something that looks cute and custom like you slaved over it for hours. <laughs> so I picked up these chocolate cupcakes from the grocery store. And what you're gonna wanna do is throw them in the freezer for about 30 minutes. This helps to really uh, make the frosting solid for this next part. And then you pull them out and then you can take some kitchen scissors and clip off the frosting from the cupcake. And then you can take one of your apple cores and make a hole in your cupcake. And then I have this peanut butter sauce that I ordered off of Amazon. Oh my word, there's the thunder again. <laughs> um, and then you can fill the inside of your cupcake with this Reese's peanut butter sauce. And then you can replace the frozen frosting right back into place. Now that part I didn't do on my channel before. To give it a fall flare, we are going to make these little edible acorns <laughs> and they are so cute. So all you need to do is take a Hershey's Kiss, you can use the milk chocolate or I use the dark chocolate ones in this one. And in the past I've used Nutter Butters, the little miniature Nutter Butters, not the big ones, the round ones that you can get in a bag. They didn't have them at my store when I went to buy them this time. So I substituted out um, some peanut butter stuffed Ritz crackers. It also tasted really Really good and worked out really well as well so both of them work then you just need to melt a, a few chocolate chips and then you dip your Hershey's Kiss in the melted chocolate chips and touch that to either your Ritz cracker your mini Ritz cracker or your mini Nutter Butter and then on the other side you take a regular chocolate chip dip that in the chocolate and that becomes your top and then you have these are really cute edible acorns that you can put on top of your cupcakes. And that's what really brings in that fall vibe to these cupcakes. Now you could add some chopped up nuts or drizzle on some melted peanut butter or whatever you want to do to zhuzh them up. I just left it on these chocolate ones plain. But I wanted to share with the ones that I have shared in the past with you because I have done this with a peanut butter frosting and it definitely pops off and like it's more noticeable on that peanut butter frosting. So you could make a homemade cupcake, a chocolate cupcake, do peanut butter frosting and then put the edible acorns on top of that. And there's just a lot of options for you on that. So there's a couple of ways to zhuzh up some cupcakes, give them the fall flare, and I hope you enjoy that. Next up, I am using up some more of those apples that are about to go by the way, but not quite mushy. <laughs> you don't have to use those kind of apples for this next one. You can use perfectly good apples as well and it will work. I just used some Gala apples and I took some tea lights that I picked up at Dollar Tree and traced them out right in the center of the apple. And then you want to get rid of the stem beforehand. I learned this the hard way. <laughs> just get rid of the stem first and then you take a knife and just cut around that where you traced the tea light to be and then once you have traced that out with a knife cut then you go back in with a spoon and scoop out the center and then you can shove your little tea light right in the top of an apple and it looks super cute right then you just need to t find a wood tray or some kind of tray I used wood because I I really feel like that natural element really helps play up the fall vibe to this and then I went out and I 
clipped a few magnolia leaves, which are richly abundant here in my neighborhood in Florida. But you could use whatever greenery you have access to. Uh, lemon leaf works good. It's also known as salal or, you know, actual clippings from an apple tree. If you're lucky to have an orchard, you can just grab some of those. It doesn't matter. The idea is just throwing together a simple yet elegant uh, centerpiece idea here so <laughs> nothing complicated so then you just line up your apples on this wood tray tuck in some greenery of your choice that you're able to easily find around you don't spend any money if you can help it and then just tuck that into place and then to up the ante of the fall vibe and scents you take some of those cinnamon sticks from that bulk cinnamon that you bought and tuck them around the arrangement at different angles and voila <laughs> that literally takes no experience you light the candles and you have a gorgeous fall centerpiece now this is probably not something that's going to last for a long amount of time obviously the apple will start to decay i don't know maybe you could do it with a foam or faux apple and it could last a little bit longer but this is definitely something for like if you're going to entertain or have a nice dinner party or whatnot you want a simple yet elegant arrangement you can go ahead and do this hack light the candles and it's beautiful and it's kind of low so you can still see people so I don't know. I just loved how this turned out. It was super easy to put together and I hope you enjoyed it too. Well, that's it for the fall hacks this time, but if you really enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. It will let me know that you want more hacks just like this. And if you have a good hack, make sure you share it with me below. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.